Hello everyone, welcome to the Founding Lessons. I hope you're doing well. For today's episode, I've invited Ayush Agarwal. Ayush is co-founder of Intuchain Technologies, a B2B SaaS-based logistics startup. He founded Intuchain in 2013 when he was still in college. Let's go to Ayush and talk about his startup and learn from his experience. Hey Ayush, how are you? I am Ovet, I am good, I am good. How are you? I'm good as well. Thank you. It, it's actually uh, quite amazing to see you after such a long time. Um, and, and thanks a lot for taking time to be on, on this show. I do understand you must have a very busy schedule. So it was so great of you to actually take time off your calendar. I use in this series, uh, I talk to entrepreneurs to understand their journey, their learnings, and the kind of problems they faced. And my intention is to actually help the budding entrepreneur. So someone who watches this interview of yours can actually learn from your journey and probably be a better entrepreneur. Um, Ayush, can you give us some background about yourself? You know, what were you doing before this? What did you study back in college? Where you're from? First of all, thanks. Thanks for inviting me. Again, a wonderful initiative. Uh, I guess I also started from college itself and mm -hmm. like, again, without much corporate I wouldn't say much without any corporate experience. Uh, so, and with like, a, uh, we also started at a, with a fresh slate. So I can understand the pain points of being a first time entrepreneur and that too at a, like people who are starting maybe in their uh, early twenties. So, so again, th that's a wonderful initiative. Uh, thanks a lot for the same uh, from mm -hmm. the entrepreneurship commu uh, community. So... Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll come to like maybe my introduction. So uh, mm -hmm. this is Ayush Agarwal. I'm one of the co-founders of the company called Intuition Technologies. Uh, I hail from Indore, Madhya Pradesh. Uh, so again, born and brought up there, had a typical engineering journey. So uh, went to Kota for ITJ preparations after my 10th grade. Uh, went there for two years, fortunately cracked IIT, went to IIT Khalakpur. Uh, I was studying in the department of mathematics there. So I had a course called mathematics and computing. It was a five year mm -hmm. dual degree course, uh, uh, which we had. So that's what I was pursuing uh, before, let's say, starting Intuition. And uh, yeah, a bit, a bit around that. So uh, come from a, come from a family, like a business family background, again, typical middle class Marwadi slash Baniya uh, business family. So that's where, yeah, that's where the roots are from. So yeah. uh, you said you have had a typical engineering uh, mm -hmm. background or journey, but uh -huh. your wasn't a typical journey, right? You, you actually uh -huh. dropped out of IIT. So tell uh -huh. us about that. I would mm -hmm. say till my third year, it was a typical engineering journey and uske baad definitely uh, I uh, I took a different route. I would say basically ACADs were not giving that uh, uh, that much kick, I would say. And at the same time, whenever, whenever, let's say, it was something which was, let's say, related to business or related to something, uh, something which was not exactly the typical data science or let's say software mm -hmm. engineering or something, something building, maybe mm -hmm. something starting from scratch. So that gave a bit of kick. But again, that didn't mean or that I wasn't, uh, I wasn't sure what does that mean, right? Because that is a typical college uh, student's mm -hmm. journey. Ki, mm -hmm. jo hai, usme so again, tip, idea the way that it is. Fifth year complete karna hai, job mm -hmm. bob leni hai, vaise hi normal uh, job mm -hmm. na course tha, internship bhi ki thi. But uh, again, wahan pe college mein jaake one thing, uh, one thing uh, which was interesting in IIT Kharagpur and you would uh, uh, like know it uh, as well is like the entrepreneurship culture, yeah. bol lo, mm -hmm. entrepreneurship cell bol lo. Mm -hmm. And uh, we didn't know again entrepreneurship before, like before starting, even after starting, we didn't know what entrepreneurship means, mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. uh, on, like spelling kya hoti uski, right? Mm -hmm. So it was simple ki, uh, achha kuch business, like this something, business can be created out of this. And mm -hmm. students are students or like, let's say people of our age or let's say people with people of our age plus five years are also starting uh, mm -hmm. something of their own. And it is doing good. It is uh, people are able to, let's say, carve a career out of it and something maybe be better than uh, let's say the normal uh, route which uh, normally people are taking so that struck mm -hmm. first of all key entrepreneurship is also a thing and mm -hmm. let's say tech businesses are also a thing because till now uh, in my head or in most of the people's head is like ki jo apne 
fathers are doing business mm-hmm. right the typical mm-hmm. let's say shop mm-hmm. or a uh, or something of that sort mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. that is the only business which can do and which mm-hmm. which is a different route and uh, which like yeah which which requires let's say some sort of backing some sort of mm-hmm. let's say mm-hmm. whatever experience and so on uh, but here what i understood was like there are there is something called tech businesses i wouldn't call that mm-hmm. entrepreneurship back then the tech businesses hote hain this can be scaled mm-hmm. at a much higher level with let's say less uh, with less let's say less capital i would mm-hmm. say capital like risk risk capital with less amount of time i would say Uh, so that's where that that is where the entrepreneurship uh, thing uh, like that bug was initiated yeah. in the mind and then uh, regarding intuition so when we were like again uh, so one of my co-founders harshit he's again from rp hall it kharagpur mm-hmm. he was uh, working on something which was a uh, like a b2c ring so it was a ring mm-hmm. uh, with which so the initial idea was the people were playing cs in uh, count, mm-hmm. like in our uh, counter strike in different let's say uh, rooms right and they were using let's say mouse and keyboard to play uh, those games so we thought that uh, why can't we give the gesture controlled ring with oh, nice. which they could mm-hmm. control let's say mm-hmm. games or let's say play games with hand gestures mm-hmm. uh, and yeah something like a maybe a realistic feel mm-hmm. of playing cs mm-hmm. with to to thing you yeah something mm-hmm. something like that right so that's where that's where the journey started of intuition and uh, in the first let's say couple of years we were we were in the college itself we made some prototypes we won some mm-hmm. competition in fact that you can call that as our first angel investment as well where mm-hmm. we won competitions of different iits and mm-hmm. we uh, gathered some money which uh, let's say Uh, like which which helped us survive for the first two three years, mm-hmm. uh, for first let's say two years in college and mm-hmm. maybe one year post college, and uh, so we won those competitions and uh, at the same time we got some pre orders as well and that gave us enough confidence that this is something uh, this is something which has to be let's say uh, pursued full time mm-hmm. and uh, post that so there then then there was a time uh, when uh, when there has to be like. we had to take a decision that do we want to continue in college and let's say uh, do this part time and then after mm-hmm. college let's do it full time or should we let's say take that leap of faith and mm-hmm. uh, uh, and go out of college and start it immediately or maybe let's say 6 months down like 6 months down the line so that was one of the like let's say that was i i would say that is one of the major step of our journey where we took that decision that yeah we'll have to come out of college to pursue this uh, and yeah that's where it all started mm-hmm. yeah and i see this uh, paradigm shift happening in india right now so recently bits pilani uh, i probably do not have full understanding of it but they said that in your final year of engineering you can actually take a full year off and you pursue entrepreneurship and that would still account i mean you would still get credits for it so i i see that as a good good wave happening in india right now okay. yeah 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 so <laughs> yeah that's there actually a lot of colleges have started i'm not sure how many are still running but people like so we were given a sabbatical for one year so that was our uh, uh, like you can say our way of going out as well that was our way of convincing parents as well that ki we are just going on a holiday of one year just yeah. assume that so so that was there then iit kharagpur also started something called dfp deferred play deferred placement program dpp sorry so that was something that you complete your you complete your college and then uh, if you want to pursue you pursue one year later two years later you will be still eligible to uh, get into placement though mm. i'll i'll be honest not a lot of once you are out of uh, college right so it's very difficult to come uh, back to it and like let's say take placement or something like that but it gives a a good uh, uh, let's a good platform for uh, uh, for any uh, student or entrepreneur your company has a very uh, interesting name can you tell me the story behind it yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah, so we we uh, get uh, so we we have been uh, like a lot of people ask us uh, that how did the name come up uh, so so initially this was supposed to be only the company name so intuition meant intuition plus imagine uh, mm-hmm. so it was uh something so mm-hmm. typically how names are mm-hmm. written right mm-hmm. so you you take a you make a excel one uh, on one uh, on one side you need you write 10 names on other side you write 10 names some uh, 
like you'll mm-hmm. combine two of them and you'll make the name so that's how most of the company names are mm-hmm. made uh, but but at the same time so yeah that that was the idea that we'll keep uh, we'll keep building products which are let's say mm-hmm. uh, which are not generally imagined which are mm-hmm. not generally uh, seen uh, so that that was the idea behind let's say keeping it in tujin and mm-hmm. uh, then we pivoted when we pivoted to logistics so we kept the same name were you ever fixated on the name or any name could have actually worked for you so again name also has an interesting story so we mm-hmm. uh, we named our first product wave mac uh, okay. because again as mm-hmm. i said mac pe wave karna tha mm-hmm. cs and stuff like that right so uh, so wave mac was the name uh, and us pe fir like we got to know that uh, Uh, apple has that patent that you can't club mac with any of the other let's say uh, word mm-hmm. and you can make mm-hmm. a name out of it so then we changed it to let's say intuition and the product was named nimble uh, oh, but mm-hmm. but it, uh, so that that's the story of the name as well yeah sure uh, that's interesting so what's the current problem that you guys are solving in the logistics space sure sure so uh so we are solving so we are a, a logistics saas company mm-hmm. uh, which helps manufacturers bring transparency and visibility in their supply chain mm-hmm. so what it means in a layman language i'll maybe uh, put mm-hmm. a uh, maybe a shark tank version of it uh, to you sure. yeah. <laughs> so so how let's say uh, as a, like, like in in terms of b2c supply chains right and in terms of b2c experience so when you order a 2 dollar food 2 dollar let's say swiggy food packet mm-hmm. right you are able to uh, track and trace the delivery boy starting from when the delivery boy is assigned to the uh, moment it the delivery boy comes to your doorstep right it's a it's a 30 minute delivery 200 rupees or a 3 dollar food packet uh, which you are able to track and trace which uh, and that's where the customer experience has reached in terms of b2c supply chains uh, mm-hmm. uh, versus when it comes to let's say uh, b2b supply chains companies like let's say dell or unilevers or let's say uh, xiaomi or pngs mm-hmm. these companies are moving goods worth millions of dollars and these are let's say global supply chains uh, these are goods uh, moving from sometimes one part of the country to other to sometimes let's say one country to other country or continent mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. and these companies do not have that visibility uh, uh, like let's say you and i have of mm-hmm. uh, let's say uh, b2c uh, food delivery apps right mm-hmm. so that is one of the major let's say gap in terms of b2 uh, b2b supply chains technology adoption in b2b supply chains and one of the major problem which we are solving is let's say visibility layer of it uh, so that is something which we are solving and we are solving it for not just let's say uh, we are solving it for all of their modes of transportation so we are solving for road transportation which involves let's say trucks we are solving for parcel deliveries we are mm-hmm. solving for ocean deliveries or container shipments we are solving for road shipments so that's what we help the companies uh, uh, and starting with let's say they start with something like where is my shipment uh which of them are getting delayed to things like which transporters are doing well in which lanes i am doing well in which distributors my material is reaching on time in which mm-hmm. uh distributors my material is not reaching on time to let's say once they have our product for 3 or 6 months then they are able to see that how much revenue i am losing because mm-hmm. my material is not reaching on time mm-hmm. how much detention or how much extra money i am paying to the let's say transporter because my materials are being held either at my source location or at the destination for a longer period of time mm-hmm. so there are multiple layers to it which like different industries have different let's say unique unique problems uh, which people are solving with the help of visibility mm-hmm. apart from like let's say basic track and trace and basic things so mm-hmm. that's what we are solving for and so today we have close to uh, 75 large customers mm-hmm. and then we have a uh, like let's say 75 smaller customers and these customers are majorly manufacturing companies so we are serving to mm-hmm. companies like diageo ultratech cement g mm-hmm. healthcare titan uh, to name a few we are also serving zepto instamart uh, mm-hmm. flipkart mm-hmm. for linko in the e-commerce mm-hmm. segment and we are handling their middle mile deliveries and then we are also serving 3pl companies which are companies like kune agal mahindra mm-hmm. logistics cci and so on mm-hmm. so yeah. so anybody and everybody who is moving material from let's say their let's say from uh, plant to warehouse warehouse to distributors inbound outbound we are able to help them 
Interesting. But this was a major pivot from your initial idea, which was wave uh, back. How did you even get an exposure that this problem exists today and this needs to be solved? Uh, uh, probably this is a two-part question. So when you were trying to pivot from your initial idea, wave back, were uh-huh. you actively looking out, you know, what problems you can solve? And then you stumbled upon this one. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. So it was, it was like that only where mm-hmm. you were actively looking for problems that can be solved. So, mm-hmm. so when we were in like the, uh, when we were in B2C space in like, as you said, we Mac or Nimble, right? So when, when we were there, so we had decent, like, so we had decent pre-orders. We had some B2B partnerships, uh, where, which gave us a B2, B2, B2C GTM. Uh, but at the same time, we realized we were too ahead of time. So the product market fit was not there. Smartphones were at a very early stage. And, uh, so, so that's where, that's where we were thinking to how, uh, we had an underlying technology. We had some, let's say, uh, ex- motion sensors, GPS, and the underlying mm-hmm. technology was there, right? And we thought that how can we make use of it in different sectors? So one is we understood that, like we understood and were advised, you can say, where, uh, let's say, IoT's application in B2B is much more and people are ready to pay uh, mm-hmm. uh, for the same. So that was mm-hmm. one of the, let's mm-hmm. say, uh, findings or learnings mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. then in iot again then we went into different let's say industries to solve that which which industries uh have let's say use case of the underlying technology so mm-hmm. uh one uh one uh like again one learning was or one let's say experience in the next maybe six to eight months was most of the uh, use cases were pointing towards the logistics industry be it transportation mm-hmm. be it warehousing mm-hmm. Now, some like it, it could be varied use cases, but majorly that, that was something pointing out. So again, that was another indication that like logistics or as an industry, something where IoT has a very big use case and uh, it's still, let's say running maybe uh, five to 10 years behind as compared to, let's say other industries in India. And if you, if you ask, let's say as compared to West, it will be maybe 10 years ahead, uh, 10 years uh, behind. So so that was something where we started actively, uh, let's say, working on uh, logistics related use cases. Mm-hmm. And uh, so so how it happened to this particular use cases for one of the e-commerce company, we were working on one of the use cases, uh, which was around driving behavior. So they wanted us to, uh, they wanted us to work on that, how trash the driver is driving, how mm-hmm. uh, how like say he's taking turns, how he's applying brakes, mostly to avoid accidents, right? And then uh, when you we were working with them, then another team came to us and then they told us that, uh, boss, this is let's say still a three year, four year, five year old, like five year ahead problem. As of now, we don't have visibility in our vehicles, in our market vehicles. Uh, so, and that's where like, again, honestly, as, as outsiders, we were very surprised because uh, as a, uh, like uh, as normal, let's say as uh, consumers, you wouldn't imagine that, let's say uh, 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 like a fast, like a forward company. So GPS is a 11 year, 11 year old technology. And these companies are very, let's say tech savvy companies and they don't have visibility over those vehicles. Mm-hmm. right? So that was something which was a revelation for us. And then post that we spoke with, let's say 30 other people in the industry who were let's say dealing with some sort of this problem or this uh, let's say use case right and we got to know that this is a real problem and uh, that's where like and more and more we spoke with people the more and more let's say conviction we got that this is a real problem and people still like the largest of the largest uh, mncs and startups still don't have visibility in those in those vehicles and uh, that's where we decided that this is something which we should do and it started mm-hmm. with, honestly, it started with that company where they were like, Ki, uh, give us something in a month's time. And mm-hmm. you that's the strength of an entrepreneur or a mm-hmm. like agile, uh, 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 like agility at that time, right? You can do it overnight. Like things yeah. maybe they couldn't find in a, let's establish con- company for three or four months. We did that in one month. And in mm-hmm. fact, the 21st day or 22nd day, we delivered it. And the go live was something which was happening on let's say 27th day so Mm -hmm. so that's where like that's where the that's where how things happened and since then it has been a it has been a upward journey uh Mm -hmm. fortunately yeah and i see that as a superpower of the startups you know it is much easier for you to maneuver your startup instead of a big giant like google or facebook Uh, uh i mean 
I'm finding this as a very interesting problem to solve when you've actually intrigued my technical curiosity. Uh, just fun my final bit, you know, what's the most granular thing that can be tracked? So imagine I'm a big manufacturer manufacturer, and I want to ship a large container from, let's say, Dubai to India, hypothetical example. Uh, now, I want to track the container itself. And I also want to track the items inside that container, the individual parcels. Now, each individual parcel can further contain some items. So what's the granular thing I can track? Uh, so you can track up to wherever you want. Uh, uh -huh. So it, you can track up to the, that last shipment level, uh, mm -hmm. wherever you want. Again, uh, if you have, let's say, 100 shipments uh, under one shipment, you can track that. You can keep 100 IoT devices or uh, things like that. So to track those shipments, you can even track the temperature uh, of those shipments. So if you have, if you're moving something which is which has to be temperature controlled. So you can do that as well. Uh, you can see how much it is moving, how much it is not moving. If it is at the same location for the uh, most amount of time or for a longer duration. So this parcel I'm assuming would move from, let's say a plant to a warehouse by road uh, or a, let's say plant to a port by road. So you can track that. Once that parcel moves into the port, you can track the whole journey or how the parcel is moving inside the port. And then once the material is loaded on the container and it is, let's say, moving over uh, over a ship or a, uh, so that also you can track. And again, until it reaches to your final distributor or retailer's leg in India, that also you can track. So uh, that is something which is possible uh, these days. It's, it depends, honestly, with the, that how much you can spend and how much do you want to spend, right? Uh, it does unit economics if you are, let's say, moving a material or the shipment worth 5 lakh uh, or the last whatever you want to track is worth 5 lakh then you can spend let's say couple of mm. uh, uh, couple of let's say 100 bucks or couple of 1000 bucks to track that material but if the material itself is let's say 50000 or uh, 30000 then you wouldn't want to track so generally people have that limit that where where they want to draw a line and it's up to them that how much right. granularity mm -hmm. they want to go mm. that makes sense but uh, the technology exists, you know, you can provide that solution as long yeah, yeah. as it makes sense. We are already doing that for, we are doing that for a couple of, let's say, phone manufacturers, cigarette manufacturers, where mm. uh, the the question, the problem statement there was that the driver is, uh, like, you can track the vehicle, you can track the drivers, but when such things happen, when theft happens, right, so they, the driver is on gunpoint and then uh, oh. the material is, uh, the mm. material is taken somewhere else. Uh, and it could be possible they just uh, take one box out of it and that one box itself is worth, let's say, uh, let's say 10 lakhs and the whole mm -hmm. truck is worth, let's say, 7, 8 crores uh, or mm -hmm. 10 crores. So then mm -hmm. they wanted to track at the shipment level. They wanted mm -hmm. to track, let's say, uh, and we have provided them. We uh, so, so that is something which is already happening. Mm, sure. Uh, and how easy or difficult it is for someone to actually fudge with that IoT device? Uh, again, so uh, it is, no, it is possible. Again, nothing is, uh, mm -hmm. you, you are, you are in the country of Jugaad, right? So nothing is, uh, something which is not possible, but it, again, it is something, uh, which can give you the, uh, like we, which can award by, like, we can, which can award the possibility by let's say 99%. So that is something I can tell you. Sure. Uh, and what were your major hurdles or the hurdles that you have faced so far? I'm, I'm sure you must be overcoming some right now as well. <laughs> uh, so again, like in an, in an entrepreneur's life, you, you have like, a, uh, so in every day you have one good news and you have, let's say nine bad news, right? So, uh, I would say every day is some sort of hurdle. If you'll ask me to choose a particular time or instance, uh, Mm, so maybe COVID again, like, which is, which was for everybody, I would say, but like for us also, that was one of the hurdles where again, a lot of our customers were, uh, let's say doing, giving paper use, uh, so like taking paper use services. Uh, so, uh, let's, so when like this happened and when lockdown happened, automatically the trucks got, uh, like uh, the logistics stopped or the trucking stopped. Uh, it was only uh, was there for essential items. So the whole revenue uh, got dipped by 50% overnight. Mm -hmm. uh, at the same time, the deal. So these are B2B deals, which are, which generally take, let's say three months uh, mm -hmm. of time to convert uh, anything. Mm -hmm. Right. And mm -hmm. that too. And then, uh, 
so those those deals which were let's say there since the past uh, past let's say three months or six months in some cases all of them got at halt as well uh, mm-hmm. so so those were like one of the i would say times where we didn't have any clue Mm-hmm. In rest of the cases, you still have something. You you know what problem might be coming, right? Uh, you still have a hunch, and you still have something to uh, uh, something you can solve for. Uh, but here we didn't have any clue, so that was I would say one of the hardest time. Um, uh, and how we uh solved for it is uh, again. So we 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 took something. We made a couple of teams inside the company. We um. Uh, we asked them to solve see and again same which we made for pivot see the underlying technology where all use cases could be uh, could be a good fit so that's like one of the use cases we uh, we were fortunately we were able to strike was in the state like uh, to track quarantine people to people who are let's say uh, quarantined in their homes so state governments and let's say district governments wanted to track people who were let's say if you i am let's say positive right and if i have to let's say stay in home but a lot of cases i was roaming around so they wanted to track people like me so we oh. gave them the technology to track uh, track people who were quarantined and that really took uh, uh, like that really took uh, it, it it was taken very well and uh, uh, in the for like in the maybe in the next two or three months we cracked almost ten state governments and close to mm-hmm. say uh, we tracked close to twelve lakh people mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and that that helped us in getting some grants as well as some revenue as mm-hmm. well which mm-hmm. which helped us uh, let's say for the let's say for the medium three to four months we uh, we were able to uh, let's say uh, I wouldn't survive but yeah it it helped us in overall uh, uh, cash flow. At the same time, um, yeah. So, so that was that was some of the and then uske baad to fir logistics started again. So it it came it went fine. And uh, as an entrepreneur or founder, how do you estimate market size for a product? You know, you came up with this amazing idea, Mac Wave. Uh, how do you even estimate that? Even if you know you you can actually make that product. Will that be profitable or not? Or how much revenue you can bring in? So theoretically, theoretically, there are some same methods which are there. So you have, let's say, again, just like any guesstimate problem, right? So you have X number of people uh, out of that X num like you have, let's say, 10 crore people. And then out of that, let's say, 2 crore will use your product. Uh, let's say 1 crore would pay, 1 crore would pay. So this would be the amount. Uh, so that's how you that's how you basically calculate your TAM and then you basically then you then see how much it is achievable in the let's say next two years how much it mm-hmm. is achievable in the next five years something like that so that's how theoretically people calculate it uh, and uh, you can do again that is the top down approach uh, uh, again you can do some like other approaches as well but that is how at the at least at the initial mm-hmm. stages people do that sure thanks and I, I see that you recently did your pre-series A of roughly around two and a half million. Uh, many congratulations for that. But can you help me understand how different is fundraising in real life compared to what I see on Shark Tank? Yeah. And uh, how, like, and is there something more to that pre-series A, series A, series B than chronological order? Is that just chronological order or there is something more to it? Hmm. Uh... So one is again, it is, uh, I, I would say at least what they show us in 10 minutes, right? So first mm-hmm. of all, it is not a 10 minute journey. It is a two hour journey for them as well. And there's two hour also, like if you, if you're specifically asking for Shark Tank, the people who are mm-hmm. coming, they are coming via hundred filters, right? So it's not something uh, which we, where we see, we see those three people, three pitches in a, mm-hmm. uh, but they, they might be actually 300 or 3000 applications, right? So, uh, so first of all, that, that's the process in real mm-hmm. world as well, mm-hmm. where uh, now here, just the difference is like you are applying, 3000 people are applying to the same shark thing here. Like in real world, you'll let's say meet more than let's say 10 or 20 uh, mm-hmm. VCs or 10, 10 or 20 mm-hmm. institutions. Right. So mm-hmm. that that is something which is uh, different, I would say. And it takes time. Honestly, it takes a lot of, let's say, uh, the cycle is there. You go there in the market. Mm-hmm. You get some feedback. You write, you work on it. You again go with the market, and then then you realize it some. So that's the general cycle, and mm-hmm. it 
again uh, i would say it could uh, people might say that it is easy sometimes they say that yeah mm-hmm. I, i got it in let's say first go or second go but it is it is difficult it's the let's say you start working on it maybe one mm-hmm. year back there are some metrics you want to track and you start working on it so pitch pitching and that uh, like the whole cycle might be let's say anywhere mm-hmm. between 3 to 6 months depending on the mm-hmm. market but mm-hmm. at the same time the whole working you are always working towards it right so that's i i would say that is there and in terms of let's say pre like again the whole seed pre series and mm-hmm. stuff uh, apart from let's say so these are just names right uh, mm-hmm. uh, names i would say but at the same time the actual meaning is there are some milestones we have you have to crack right so mm-hmm. every let's say uh, uh, let's say idea stage would have a different milestone versus a pre series a would have a different milestone versus mm-hmm. a series mm-hmm. a or series b series c would have a different milestone right so these are milestones i would say which are generally tick and based on that milestone you get uh, you you are pitching that i want to achieve the next milestone so that's why i need this much mm-hmm. amount of money to achieve mm-hmm. the next milestone and yeah so that's how it works it's mm-hmm. uh, apart from the naming convention sure cool thanks uh, i've got bunch of quick fire questions as well for you uh, i'll okay. start with the i'll start with the first one uh, idea versus execution execution <laughs> yeah nice and uh, are entrepreneurs born or they can be made they can be made can you actually expand on that i mean i know it's a quick fire but couple of lines on that uh again i i would say nobody is as i told well, nobody is born entrepreneur again uh, so people mm-hmm. just uh, uh, people have to be in that problem solving if they are mm-hmm. problem solvers if they are able to like mm-hmm. acha one example could be let's say if i join mm-hmm. as a let's say if i join as a employee in a startup early stage startup mm-hmm. uh, maybe when i am there till, till when i joined it till then i wasn't in that entrepreneurship mindset mindset but when i see that journey the highs the ups and the lows of it uh then i i start getting the let's say kick of it and mm-hmm. i also start getting the understanding that mm-hmm. i can do it uh, mm-hmm. so that and that a lot of people can then let's say start uh, uh, the startup journey you can see the flip uh, flipkart mafia right not mm-hmm. a lot of and you have hundreds of startups from flipkart do you think hundreds of people uh, were made for entrepreneurship when they joined flipkart it flipkart changed them right mm-hmm. correct uh and uh, what do you feel about idea versus a tangible mvp not a final product but what do you think is more important like if i come to you with just an idea compared to i come with you come to you with a tangible product which is not probably in a good shape but it's still more tangible than a raw idea what would you prefer the any day of tangible mvp i would prefer right so like mm-hmm. that is the next stage so mm-hmm. if you are graduating to the next stage i would definitely want that uh, again so uh, it uh, so it totally depends like where so that like to answer the question M- mvp is something i would say huh? sure and what are the common hurdles an entrepreneur uh, can expect to face between let's say idea to mvp I yeah know. idea to mvp is like again idea is just uh, idea is uh, mm-hmm. idea is came come sitting in let's say a group of friends or let's say colleagues or wherever you are right so that is that is where the idea comes from and mvps are something where you now let's say speak to 100 people you validate it you make certain some product and then you go go down in the market right and mm-hmm. whatever you expected sitting in that let's say ac room uh, mm-hmm. might not work at ground people might not be really that much really excited for what you are building how mm-hmm. you were or people let's say might not be ready to pay for it uh, mm-hmm. so all those things or let's say the honestly the tam also uh, comes in the picture tam is something which you don't realize immediately uh, because every idea you see that acha 150 crore log hain to kuch na kuch to bikega hi but wo, that that is not the case honestly every time you you like when you go there then you understand ki uh, what exactly what the gap is there what actually the gap is what do you think of uh, startup accelerator programs uh, startup accelerator programs it, uh, they are good i would say again depends on uh, mm-hmm. um de- depends on what kind of startup acceler- accelerator programs again uh, i would say that some startup accelerator programs are very generic and mm-hmm. some are very specific 
सो जनरिक जनरिक वन्स अगेन जनरिक वन्स आर वे लाइक सम ऑफ द जनरिक वन्स आर वेरी गुड वर्सेस लाइक लेट्स से इफ यू आर रनिंग अ स्पेसिफिक बिजनेस लेट्स से इन ईवी इंडस्ट्री एंड शेल इज गिविंग यू एन लेट्स से एक्सेलरेटर और इनक्यूबेटर और व्हाटएवर यू कैन कॉल इट राइट सो दैट हेल्प्स यू uh that helps you uh in let's say building the business in in the long term so again you need to know what is, what do you want from the accelerator then you want to choose it sure cool uh what do you think i use is the best time to raise capital also uh uh-huh. there's another follow up on this mm-hmm. so i understand the raising capital comes with dilution of ownership you know so you get investors in they may want you to pivot from your idea uh that something that as an entrepreneur or a founder you may not like so what's the best time to actually raise capital so the first capital i am assuming you are asking for ki when is the best time to raise the first capital yeah right yeah uh acha so so there is uh, again there is a lot of caveat to this question or this situation right again it totally depends on when you are uh, uh, if you are a student or entrepreneur matlab kitna paisa hai bank mein right so that also depends so if you have let's say some money saved right uh, so then you can let's say uh, uh, then you can completely uh, completely sustain for one one and a half years even build a team of let's say five or six or let's say seven eight full time members mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. without any external vc funding or any mm-hmm. angel funding mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. so uh, what's let's mm-hmm. say if you are a if you are late, like let's say if you are some, a student entrepreneur or if you are something who is starting in their first let's say three or four years of uh, of their corporate life mm-hmm. so then the situation changes so again mm-hmm. totally depends on where where your like what is your stage of life uh mm-hmm. but uh, assuming let's say if you like assuming in terms of uh, uh, in terms of let's say early stage entrepreneurs or uh, who are starting starting in their early uh, stages of life so in that case i would uh, again i would uh, i would say until let's say you are mvp is there you have let's say some kind of initial traction you mm-hmm. have some kind of uh again depends on the product if you have paying users if that would be great if you are able to let's say uh, uh have some paid users and paid let's say customers then you go with the then you go to the uh, investor that creates a better impact uh, you also uh, know the market relatively better uh, so i would say that would be that would be one of the stages uh, where i would say ki now i know that the product is ready uh, or let's say the ha uh, mvp is ready and now i need funds for let's say scaling up to a level where i need let's say the next uh 1000 users or let's say hun, in terms of b2b you need let's say an, another let's say 25 first 25 customer mm-hmm. or in the b2c space i would say let's say first let's say a couple of 1000 customers that is something mm-hmm. which i need and i can't do it without capital without let's say a lot of capital if my business is such that uh, i would Uh, need less capital and it could be let's say the capital can be rotated then i would say that still you can delay the fundraise uh, thing but at the same time if your business is such that your cacs are high your unit economics or like say the paid users are not there then you have to go and uh, take the capital uh, coming to the second part of the question which was like uh, are investors good to the business that that what was that the gist of your question yeah in the sense that i i see that they are core interest because they are investors they want to make money out of that investment now mm-hmm. and as a entrepreneur your risk appetite can be super high for example someone like you who dropped out of college you know uh-huh. saw value in an idea and directly went all in when someone like an investor comes in they would want to reap the benefit of that product immediately so that dilution comes with its own side effects yeah so honestly that's not the i wouldn't say that's the case with early stage investments so mm-hmm. mostly early stage investments are done by angel investors who are people like let's say uh, you and me and uh, mostly hni is some a lot of them have been founders themselves uh, so these people are like one is they understand the whole journey of it second is uh, even if they are like let's say not 
not founders, not who. So these people know that these these are long term bets they are taking. If they wanted short term bets, then they can they have better sources to make money. Uh, mm-hmm. so most of the angel investors, I would say at least they come with a let's say really high uh in terms of cycle. They 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 wouldn't push you to the uh, push you to the wall that do this do that unless mm-hmm. like definitely you could land up at the wrong place as well. But in major cases, I haven't seen I haven't seen that that push is been happening uh that push happens a lot uh so that's i would say that and but i just say and in fact more what i've seen is people if if you're able to engage the investors well right then they mm-hmm. add a lot of value to your business which you might not be able to let's say uh you might not be able to even think that through and maybe let's say if you'll if you'll try to learn yourself you might take two or three cycles to learn it but somebody who is from that background they'll just tell you this is this is the way this this is the mistakes we have made and please don't make the same mistakes so Mm -hmm. so so i i would i wouldn't say definitely what you're saying definitely Mm -hmm. applies when you have a a a large institutional investor you are at let's say series a series b uh, where the stakes are also very high right so uh, so that that's where th- things like these come into the picture but but again uh, that's the uh, that's the other side of uh, uh, investments like fundraise right uh, if you want to grow big you are taking somebody's capital so you are responsible for it uh, you can't like mm-hmm. uh, move away from uh, that fact mm-hmm. yeah that makes sense are there any uh, important startup connects networking sessions uh, mm. that you attend and you would recommend others to also join uh so i'll be honest i am very uh, so i generally uh, stay away from uh, startup mm-hmm. events at least post that post that phase right so uh, a couple of them are very good in uh, very good in nature so that is something like yearly you have your story uh, ka jo mm-hmm. connect hai, wo sab hai. but mm-hmm. what at least after some stage i believe that you need to understand you need to stay more with the customers mm-hmm. uh, where uh, you need to attend more let's say in our case it would be more supply chain related events more mm-hmm. uh, logistics related events so that i can get more insights from the customers uh, so that is what i believe but that is a very personal belief honestly mohit uh, but again in the early stage you in the early stage you meet a lot of people in the early stage you meet let's say every, every meetup every event mm-hmm. whatever mm-hmm. is happening in the nook and corner right and most of the mm-hmm. events are free uh, you don't mm-hmm. like you have mm-hmm. to pay for these events mm-hmm. so you just go there you just go there and network just understand uh, mm-hmm. uh, maybe you might find some like you'll meet 100 people and one mm-hmm. of them might be uh, might become relevant to you maybe sometimes I- immediately and sometimes in the near future in fact mm-hmm. the first our very first investor we found via was a uh, startup meet up and mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. it was a gaming event and he was mm-hmm. like he he got excited and he was like he let's i'll uh, i'll invest let's exchange numbers i'll invest we were like ki aise daru pe ke mazak kar rahe but agle din subah call aaya ki bhai karte hain to uh, and this this person did invest so mm-hmm. uh, but at the but but yeah so in early stage i would say it's very very it's very important but in later stages i believe that i need to stay uh, more with my customers and then you need to have more meaningful deep relationships uh, with founders who are maybe similar or not similar phases where you can be open uh, uh, with them right these are the problems which i am facing and uh, uh, this is something crashing can you help me with the same versus like in early stages you are not that open you you can't just in a networking event i can come to you mohit ki customers nahi bad rahe hain ya fir ye fundraise mein ye problem aa raha hai ya ye ho raha hai ya main bahut achhi cheeze bhi nahi batana chahunga maybe uh, versus uh, so that that relationship changes from smaller mm-hmm. uh, short term relationships to deep uh, uh, relationships as uh, you increase like as you go forward in the journey mm-hmm. so sure. uh you also mentioned that you are from a business background or you're from a business family how do you see that entrepreneurship is different from small business if not a large enterprise uh so a uh, small business versus entrepreneurship uh so i believe that a lot of things are same uh, a lot of things are same in terms of let's say how a business like what risks what uh, uh, uh what risks as a businessman you take how you uh, how you let's say uh, approach problems and similarly entrepreneurship is also same uh, 
um, there are a couple of things which are different. One of them major thing is category creation. So mm -hmm. generally when my father opens a business, he will see that achha, is, like there is uh, in another market, uh, this particular product is selling very well or this particular let's say shop is working very well in this market or in this area this shop is not there so let's open something like that right so uh, so that is uh, like that is the way and so the market is already there or the let's say category is already created you are kind of copying it and you are trying to bet it uh, you, you are taking a bet in a different market now when it comes to general like say startup entrepreneurship entrepreneurship so these are more category creation you have to tuition chal rahi thi wahan se by juice let's say online classes pe leke aaya right uh, so uh, you, you have for linkos of the world you have paytms of the world right so things were not there uh, uh, when when uh, these guys started and even let's say if they have two three competitors they are also figuring out so it's not something that let's say phone pay is copying paytm so it's they are also in that figuring out journey from zero to one and uh, that's where the, they are equally let's say responsible for creating the category uh, mm -hmm. that is one of the major difference i would say mm -hmm. and as for you what are the must have skills for an entrepreneur and if those skills can be cultivated uh must have skills must have skills would be would be again you have to be patient you have to be uh, like yeah, one, one is you have to be patient you have to be let's say problem solver again you you need to understand like every problem you need to see uh, like that typical engineering mindset right that you have this problem you break down break that down into pieces see where exactly where can, you can move the levers right so so that is something which i would say which is one of the most important mm -hmm. uh, selling is something which is important which is again it generally does not come from day one it is mm -hmm. it takes you some time uh, to develop that uh, so so selling when i say selling so it's not customer selling always it's just like that how do you uh, sell to the investor sell to your team sell to your sell to people who whom you meet so so that kind of thing sell to your parents so all of that coming comes into picture right sure and are you always super motivated or you have your own uh, down days or you know you ever indulge in self doubt yeah, so I think, uh, yeah, that's there. So you, uh, super motivated is nothing. Like again, honestly, mm -hmm. as I told you, right? So in in 10, uh, like you have one uh, one good news in the day and you, you have one nine bad news, right? So you mm -hmm. already are like, let's say, uh, demotivated in some parts of the day anyways. Uh, mm -hmm. So so that's there and that's a part of uh, like the journey in terms of days so there will be days where you will be very let's say demotivated what's going on you'll be like you'll be cursing yourself you'll be cursing let's say left right center key what exactly this guy is doing what exactly those guys are doing but uh, at the same time you you need to be mature enough that nah, this these are the problems you are not doing something which is very easy right mm -hmm. and which is not something which is already uh, somebody has solved uh, mm -hmm. or uh, so if you are chasing a larger goal then the problems will also be there so you need to be mature enough that these problems would come and every problem has a solution to it and if let's say uh, yeah if taken well or if chosen like choosing uh, the right way to solve it it can be solved so uh but but there are days there are days of let's say uh lows uh as well uh, and i mean now i'm taking a pivot here so what's your uh, take on the current market scenario so during the pandemic days or years, there was a lot of growth in the market. Everyone overestimated that growth, overhired, and then now there are a lot of layoffs because of that. Uh, so what's your take on that? Uh, take as in like so, uh, as in what the what do I think uh, these people should have done something or what should we? Uh, maybe I can expand on that. So there are. Uh, mindsets like churn and burn, hire and fire. You know, if there is a high growth uh, year or let's say quarter, you hire people for that. Mm -hmm. And then when you do not have enough requirement, you fire people. Now, mm -hmm. as an employee, I see that as a bad practice because that's those are humans that you're playing with. So what do you think about those kind of policies? Uh, honestly uh, honestly from the employee side it's very it's very let's say bad and uh, nothing worse can happen again you uh, 
ओवर नाइट और लेट से ओवर इमीजिएटली यू गेट टू नो दैट दिस इज समथिंग विच इज है have to start the whole cycle again uh, so that's very bad again the, the, from the employee side of it from the uh, from the other side of it from the entrepreneur side of it i can tell you again uh, i i wouldn't be able to generalize but what i know from most of the people from uh, our peers so most of the people didn't first of all there is nothing uh, uh, people didn't knew like so for example as you said that in a quarter let's say higher growth will be there for a quarter and then we'll fire right so that so that uh, uh, they don't know that second quarter may growth wouldn't be there so they assume that whatever growth we are seeing that will be there for the longest time and not just uh, a quarter or a year they most of the people assume that this growth will be there for let's say 3 or 5 years uh, and that's where they ramped up their teams and uh, stuff like that and uh, if they knew honestly that this was only let's say one quarter or two quarter people would have hired contract employees mm-hmm. because that's where your liability is not there and you are let's say you are day from day one you are making that clear that it's mm-hmm. just let's say a six month or a one year mm-hmm. uh, engagement so first of all that's what i would mm-hmm. say again it might sound very uh, Uh, like it might sound like a very one side one sided story but that's what i believe in general at least if people knew that uh, i i believe that it, if people knew that two years later or even uh, uh, yeah if two years later this thing will come and where they the funding crunch would be there for the longest time so i am sure that 90% of the people wouldn't have hired full time employees they would have hired some kind of let's say contract or might not have hired at all at that pace right uh, so this is this is what i feel but again whatever said and done this is not good for the industry right so uh, the people who like you you see that shift that people start believing in startups people start believing in new uh, let's say entrepreneurs uh, and suddenly uh, and and people leave their let's say uh, mnc uh, mnc jobs or st- secured stable jobs to join a startup and then when these things happen so again that shakes the whole uh, uh, again the confidence of the industry uh, mm-hmm. so so yeah that i i would say that uh, yeah. uh, that's the scene Yeah, I I do agree that this has led to a major paradigm shift as well. So earlier, I can speak for engineers at least. So earlier engineers, uh, most of the engineers they wanted to work for Fang, you know, because they felt uh, there is a prestige associated with it as well as it comes with a level of security. Now, mm-hmm. because there was this major firing in Fang as well, now they think you know we can very well work for a startup as well. It comes with its own set of rewards. Uh, Are you guys hiring right now? Yeah, we do. Uh, we are hiring people. Yeah, sure. Cool. I I wanted to highlight this on my post as well because there are people who would want to, you know, find the opportunities right now. Uh, well, maybe, then I'll maybe spend maybe thirty more seconds. Yeah, so yeah we are hiring. Sure. <laughs> yeah. So so we are hiring. We are hiring. Uh, uh, so we are hiring people in product, senior people in product. Uh, we are hiring people in uh, sales. Uh, we are hiring people in. Uh, uh operations or implementation we are hiring people in tech as well so we just raise the round we are looking for people who can let's say uh, take us to the next set of uh, uh, journey so and this is the most of the locations most of the roles are let's say in bangalore but some of these uh, roles are also in uh, bombay and delhi as well mostly the client facing roles are in bombay delhi as well awesome cool uh with that i think we can wrap this up uh, thanks a lot for taking time out uh, this was really useful and i am sure people will find this very inspiring thanks a lot nay thanks a lot mohit for inviting me i think uh, i enjoyed a lot uh, yeah, it's been a long time <laughs> yeah. yeah thank you bye bye thank you thank you thank you mohit bye 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 thanks for watching this episode i hope you enjoyed it the more i talk to entrepreneurs the more i realize that more than anything else it's your ability to be at it to continuously pursue something that you firmly believe in with that thought i'll take your leave i'll see you soon in the next episode till then keep innovating and believing in yourself have a great day